are you giving out candy on yeah. your way up here? You guys want candy, right? Everyone likes candy. All right. It was there's a ton back there, so I figured I don't wow. need to eat all that. Who can take the sunshine and sprinkle it with love? I would though. The candy? I would eat all that candy. <laughs> okay. Don't call me the candy man. No. Okay. <laughs> right. I uh, I won't. Chris, good to see you. Yeah, good um, to see you. We're here to talk about letting you in. Um, Who's that guy? Album, who is that guy? Album number four or number four. five, depending four on how. Four and a half. Four that? and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's start with that that half an album back in two thousand and seven. Yeah. This is right before Idol. You you self released an album. I did. Um, before I thought anyone was going to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like for family and friends. Yeah, it was for family and I mean mostly. I I did like a release show back home in Little Rock. And pretty much that's the only people that were there were just family and friends. <laughs> I think I sold 80 copies of it. So 80, that's, that's, that's a respectable of a, a number of friends or a very big family. I have a big family. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and what was that thing called? It was called Brand New Shoes. Which was a reference to? I don't know. Oh, come on. It was did. one of the songs that was on the record. All right. All right. So you had said uh, that... Um, that you, you were out there, you dropped out of college, you were making a go at music. Make it sound so bad. No, I'm making it sound good, because the next thing is where it goes. That is true. I, 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 I left college, because I didn't, I didn't feel like I, um, I didn't know what I was doing there, so I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave and start making music, and, and uh, so I had like a part-time job, and I was doing music on the side. And uh, Idol, you have said, was kind of it you you were going to do that and if that didn't work I, I think I still would have played music I don't know if I would I didn't know how to pursue it as far as like it being the end all like the career, career. that whole thing I didn't I didn't know that at the time I mean at the time there wasn't uh there wasn't YouTube there wasn't all these different things where you can put yourself out there no matter where you are right um it was like how can I get a record deal and um and so I, I, did, I didn't know. So it wasn't like you were on that. Google Maps at 13 plotting your way to Nashville to get your, your deal no. at that point. And I had went to Nashville and nothing happened. Um, but no, I, I, had, I still did, I didn't have any idea. So Idol was definitely the, like, this is, this is a shot. If it doesn't work, I, did, I didn't expect anything from it. Um, but I was like, if this works, cool. And if, it, if I get further, then maybe somebody will see me and want to do something. Um, and if it didn't, then I would, you know, play music back home, but I'd have to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so the, you, you weren't thinking of going back to college. You were thinking straight. Well, I was, you know, when I was, um, right. So, uh, before I tried out, I had, uh, enrolled in classes and had went to like the first week and then they called me back. So I had to drop out. Again, again, <laughs> <laughs> and so your parents were very proud. Yeah, just they are ecstatic. Um, and then the so after Hollywood Week, I didn't know how far I was going to make it in the live stuff either. So I enrolled in classes again the next semester. So you 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 dropped out three times. Yeah, I dropped out three times. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. went to some classes then, and then I was like, I gotta go again. <laughs> wow, um, yeah. that's that's even more times than Kanye West. That's I think impressive. so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it did work, and, and, and I had read something you wrote, uh, and I was really interested by this, that, that you feel that season eight had really the best crop of talent that had come through. And apparently others agree. I, th I think so. And I'm not saying that because they're my friends. I mean, I have friends from other, from other seasons of the show as well. It was just... I, I don't think any of us had any idea who was going home, like, week to week. Hmm. Um, I'm, I know that I was always packing my bags, like, I'm ready to go. Uh, and we hear that all the time, I'm packing my bags, but do you literally pack your bags? I literally, I didn't really unpack my bags. <laughs> <laughs> That's just kind of how I live anyways. Okay. Um, but, uh, but it was tough, man. It was just Everyone was so talented you know, from, from 13 up. Like, it was just, it was really insane. And uh, and I think that shows there's a lot of people that are doing great things from from the season now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and um, you know that was a season where you said uh, you moved forward by. 
doing you, which a lot of people say. We hear that a lot. But, but what does that mean? How did that, how did that take shape for you that season? Well, I think I saw my spot in the show. Um, there were a lot of really great singers, and I'm not saying that I'm not a good singer, um, but I think that there's the way that other people can sing like Adam or Danny or, or even Allison or some other people are a little bit more um, flashy, and I say that in a good way. Um, and it's a little more immediately like, oh, wow, I like that. And so for me it was like how can I seem a little bit different than that and take, take these songs sometimes that people didn't know, like Falling Slowly or, or even Heartless or something like that uh, or To Make You Feel My Love. All these songs that people hadn't, like, they haven't been, like, shoved in their brains, you know what I mean? Um, and so when they hear it for the first time, it's like, oh, that's your song. Like, that's my song. So essentially, for some people, uh, I've heard this, like, I love your song Falling Slowly. And I'm like, I didn't write that song. <laughs> I wish I did. But I, but I didn't, you know? But, but they think I did and because that was the first time they heard it. And, and so there was a lot of that. I think song choice was a big thing for me. And and let us a little further into that. Uh, song choice is a big thing for you. You're coming with your own ideas. Are are you getting pressure back to take it in a different direction? Like, hey, let's give the people a song they know. Uh, for the most part, I didn't, um, which was really crazy. Um, I I feel like I had a lot of free reign, and maybe it's because I didn't think I was going to go very far. Um, and uh, so I, uh, yeah, I did. I I just picked whatever song I wanted, and there was only one time, I was supposed to rock week, I wanted to sing While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and they were like, that's not rock enough, and so I did come together. <laughs> um, Still a good song. Both good songs. Yeah. Nothing nothing really wrong with a Beatles song for yeah. rock week. I was like, I'm going to, the Beatles are my type of rock, I'm going to go that way. So, um, share, share your thoughts with us on, we're, we're in the midst of the last season ever. Last season. Oh, an idol. Yeah. Um, two things. One, did you expect that it would end? I don't know if I expected it, you know. Um, I am kind of surprised to see it end, but I'm also, I'm also not, too. You know, it's been going on for a long time, and uh, 15 seasons is, is a lot. Well, the competitors now really grew up on the show, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just... Almost, there's almost no point in their life when it wasn't Isn't that in their crazy? conscience. They'd have to be really small. Like, I remember you when I was 12 <laughs> or 10, you know. I'm like, oh, gosh, that makes me feel really old. Um, but it, I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be crazy for it not to be on. I think that people will miss it more when it's gone than they do, than they realize they will. Mm. Um I think it's a great show, and what I mean, obviously, what it's done for me has been amazing. What it's done for so many different artists has been crazy. And I, I don't know if you know of another show that people, families, and sit down and like watch it religiously. Um, I, I haven't. I didn't watch a show like that when I was a kid, and so, and I think a lot of people have done that with Idol. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm around my house, it's must love cats and, and idol. Those two things. It's <laughs> kind of it. It's an I, don't, I don't know that show. It's appointment view. It, it, you have to have cats. We do. Oh, um, let's I move on. I don't have a cat. <laughs> um, well, well, let's talk a little about the, the new record, Letting You In. Um, we were talking backstage. This is the second album you've recorded since you had to relearn to play guitar is that is that right yeah so i got in a i got in a car accident about three years ago now um and it all it's crazy how things happen really fast and can change your life um and i and i messed up my wrist really bad i broke it just it was i think broke is like a nice word for it it's one of those things where like you do it and i remember i was sitting in the car with my wife and it happened you know the whole thing happened and i kind of pass out and i wake up and uh, and I'm trying to undo my seatbelt, and I look at my hand. I'm like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> I go, babe, something's up with my arm. <laughs> and she goes, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, just trying to make a light of the situation. And uh, and so I, you know, I, I had to, I had three surgeries that year. 
was in a cast for most of the year. And, and you actually went on tour shortly after the the accident, didn't you? I did. So you, you were touring in a cast. So the, the accident happened on the 1st. I had surgery on the 4th of January, but all these in January. And our first show was on the 8th. <laughs> wow. I didn't miss a show. And uh, wow. I, uh, thank you. <laughs> They're clapping for stupidity. <laughs> um, it, I don't know if it was the smartest decision I've ever made, but I do feel like I owed it to the fans to be out on the road, even without that, like with with that ailment. You know? Right, because obviously if, if you're not in the business of playing shows, you, you've got probably insurance on these dates for exactly this yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, we could have... You, you could cancel and come yeah, back. Yeah, we could have do done it. something like that, but... Um, I, th I think probably uh, a wrist broken in several places is probably a pretty good excuse to, to take, a, take a show or two. I should have... I mean, I think the doctors were like, you probably shouldn't go on the road. <laughs> Um, I I couldn't put my own pants on. Like it was, it was really crazy. There was a, a big so there, bearded there's a, man. There's a roadie who got a bonus. There was a big bearded man that was putting on my pants every day. Wow. Okay. Wow. Just being honest. <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> he's one of my best friends. <laughs> and um. Yeah, so I mean, even in that uh, during that during that time, I was so I was in the cast, and all I could use was my fingers. Mm. Going back to the guitar playing, and so my therapist was telling me like, play guitar. So even when you had the cast, on. even, even the when cast, you had the cast on, because my fingers would swell up, and like you had to move them to get the you know kind of make the swelling go down and kind of keep your movement in them that way they didn't stiffen up. And so I would like play guitar like this. And so, and still, I, I mean, that's how I play now. Like, that's the, for a year, that's how I learned to play again. And, uh, and in a way, because I was spending so much time on it and so focused on it more than ever before, and I start, I've been playing guitar my whole life, um, I feel like I've become a better player because of it. And that's just, you know, from support from family and friends, just like, you're going to be okay. You're going to have to work a lot harder than you've ever done before. But, um, you know, you just get through stuff. Yeah. Um, tell me about the writing and recording of this record. You, you worked on it in Nashville, um, where you, you had moved uh, about a year and a half ago. Is that about right? A year and a half ago, moved to Nashville. Uh, and and, and who'd, you, who'd you work with on the album? So uh, we kind of put together a producer team for this record, um, which I'd never done that before. So the last record I had, Charlie Peacock produce it, who is just the best, and he's a sweet, wise man. Um, and but so for this one, we did a uh, like a team, and so we had two guys that were just doing the tracks, Ian Fitchick and Conrad Snyder, and they are um, top notch, and they kind of. Um, really helped shape the sound and kind of take ideas and like, well, let's do this and put together a great band. We recorded most of the tracks in four days, something like that. Really? Which is really fast. Wow, yeah. We were kind of, it was kind of crazy how fast all that stuff happened. And, and, and you had a lot of material to choose from, right? You'd, you'd written quite a few songs? or I had written a lot of songs. A lot of them weren't very good. Okay, that makes um, the choice a little easier. So they, easier. they kind of like start to, it's easy to knock those off. Uh, but I think there was like 15 or 16 that we were really choosing from mm. um, that it was hard to, to whittle down to 10. But we wanted to get it down to 10. Felt like it was a good, concise number. And then, so for the vocals, we actually got a friend of mine, Brown Bannister, to to record just the vocals. And uh, that, and I had never done anything like that before. He's really, really tedious when it comes to to vocal stuff, which I am too. And and being a pretty good singer, you know, you work with a lot of people, and they're like, "Oh, that take was great. Like, cool." He is not that. <laughs> we would spend a whole day on a song, and it's all the and, and you think about it, and the way I think about it is like these songs are new to me. I just wrote them not too long ago. I haven't been singing them for years. So I'm still learning them. And so doing that and like taking a bunch of different takes and, um, you know, and he's really good at saying, which is really hard in music. He's really great at saying, uh, giving direction in, in like a vocal session. 
um, like in in words. Music is really hard to explain. It it really is. Like you either like it or you don't. Um, but for him, it's like this. Like he knows how to uh, work with singers, and it was and a, so he can tell you which which word, which melody, yeah, which, yeah, which like to get harder, pull back on. Yeah, like maybe emphasize this word or. Or, you know, you're kind of on the beat right now. What if you, like, laid back on uh-huh. everything right now? And it's just this, I'd never done anything like that before. And so we, it took us, it took us a long time for, for us to get all the vocal stuff. But um, I, th- I think it's, I think he did a great job. So the basic tracks came quickly, and then the the, hard, really did. the harder work was on the, on the vocals. Yeah, which is, which is cool, because I, I, I am really picky about the vocal stuff, so it was good that someone else was too. Um, let me ask you about uh, one song on this record, uh, "If We Do Nothing." Mm-hmm. Um, tell me, tell me about writing that song. Tell me what it's about. So, if we keep doing nothing, I was in, uh, I was in a writing session with uh, my friend KS Rhodes, who have, we've written a bunch of songs together now, and uh, we. It was the day after the organ shooting. Uh, Oregon Community College, uh, yes. October 2015. Yes, yes, it was last year, yeah. um, late late last year. In that, I think it was in October. Maybe it was, yeah. Um, really crazy, and I feel like, and that was kind of the first in like the string of a bunch of shootings that had happened that year, um, last year. And uh, so we decided we were talking about it and kind of, you know, just saying our feelings about it and. Uh, and so we decided, like we had as songwriters, like we have to write a song about this. And so we did. And you never, you never feel like the ones that are, you know, tinged in that way that are not controversial. It doesn't feel like a controversial song, um, but about something that is controversial. Like maybe that's not going to end up on the record, or you know, maybe we wrote that for ourselves and no one else will hear it. And it just kept sticking around. And actually, those shootings kept happening. And um, we were texting each other back, like, man, this song is so now. It's so, like, what we need to hear right now, but also hopefully it's what other people need to hear. And, uh, and it, so it just kept on sticking with us. And I, I, it's, it's up there with one of my favorites on the record, for sure. I, th- I definitely think it's the most um, inspired song. And, and it's not... I wouldn't say it's a, a song that tells people what to do, right? And, and, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know if a lot of people know what to do to change things. Um, you kind of feel lost, but something has to be done. Um, in that, you know, in that way, and in, in even the song, the song isn't so specific about gun violence, but it, um, but it's, I think it's kind of um, this broad spectrum of kind of where our country is right now, where I feel like some things need to be done or we might be <laughs> looking at some uh, interesting times strange times ahead right and and yeah. one of the one of the points the song makes is if we do nothing everyone loses uh, yeah. which actually did did remind me of turning on the news at almost any time in the last few months <laughs> it's real right i mean you it's so scary guys i don't know if you feel that way but i do um, well you're headed home to nashville tonight Yes. And then out on the road playing these new songs, right? Yeah, we were, I was actually on the plane right here a couple of days ago. I was trying to go through and pick out which songs we're not going to do okay. from this record. And I couldn't find one yet. So um, <laughs> you might be hearing the whole record, but I hope that's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Lots of new material. Um, we've got time for some questions from the audience. I'm going to start with a question from an online viewer. Oh, okay. So Juliana would like to know, now that you have a bigger following, what is your favorite part about sharing music with your fans? Um, my favorite part has always been their, um, their familiarity with the music. Um, to go to shows and like play shows and see people singing the songs and enjoying it and knowing them 
Like, I would have never imagined that seven years ago. It would have been... Which is why you're about to hit them with uh, a whole bunch of songs that are on a record that just came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, mix yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they will be familiar with them uh, by the time some of the, old the shows. <laughs> oh, we will definitely do some of the old of stuff, course. absolutely. Of um, if, I could, if I had my way, I would play a lot more songs than we usually do during the rub. But I'm not Bruce. <laughs> Maybe. Hi. Hi. Um, What's your name? Sharona. Sharona? Yeah, thank you for the Starburst, by the way. That was great. You're welcome. Yeah. Did it taste good? I didn't have it yet, but I'll definitely let you know. I'll like, text you later. <laughs> so. Give you something. Sure, sure, uh, Sharona, I'm not sure you understand the point of candy. <laughs> oh, well. I'm supposed to eat it. Later, later. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you're allowed to answer this question, but I hope you can. Who would you like to see win American Idol this year? I'm, I, you're right. I could answer that question. Who would you like to see in the top two if that's a little more PG? <sighs> it's a little, <laughs> a little more PG, is that what you said? Um, so when I, I, I'll give you a story. When I was on the show, um, you know, you see all these, like, former contestants. They get asked this question, and, so, you know, people answer it. And so when they come to the show, you know who they're voting for. And so your their handshake to you is almost like a, I don't like you. <laughs> I don't think you should win. <laughs> I remember Katy Perry came to the show. She was so you know, she was really into Adam, and rightfully so. He's great, but she was like promoting him, and um, which is totally fine. I'm not putting any of that stuff down, but it it kind of puts all the other contestants that are there. It kind of gives you this like. Well, you don't, you don't even like me at all, then. <laughs> so I'm not going to answer that. So you can give the grandma answer. Everyone's painting is his. Favorite. No, I appreciate it. I've been asked it. I'm. At, I've been asked it a bunch. But I'm. But I'm. If I wasn't going back, maybe I would answer. <laughs> it. Hi, Chris. Um, Hi. I was actually at the Ridgefield show you played right after your car accident. It was like one of the best times of my life. So. I was on a lot of drugs. That was. A, it, it, <laughs> It was so a really fun time. Good. It was good. <laughs> um, I was just wanted to know. I'm like obsessed with your cover, "Chandelier" by Sia. Thank you. And I was just wondering, what's your favorite song to cover? Mm, favorite song to cover? I think. Uh, it, I think we've done this a little bit live, but um, because of the guys that I that I play with, they're great singers too, and I enjoy singing with other people. We've done uh, "The River" by Garth Brooks a uh, bunch, and. Um, and it's fun to sing with those guys. And that, that song is one of those songs that when I hear it or even when I sing it, it's one of those that, like, really makes you feel something. And, and that song means a lot to me. It was a big part of my childhood. So I love that song. There we go. We've got time for one more question right here in the front. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I have two questions. You kind of half stole my question. <laughs> my first two questions is what are you most excited to be performing on the tour from this album? Yeah. And any chance you'll do the like cover requests you've done in past tours? <laughs> uh, to answer the first question, I would. It's hard to choose between Faster Shoes and If We Keep Doing Nothing. Um, I think I, both of those I've been excited about since I wrote them to perform live. Um, the cover thing. So we did this like uh, I would request a cover that day of the show, do that song. Um, it became really daunting. To you had to learn. You had to learn the song. You had to learn that song, a new song every day, which is doesn't sound terrible. Um, how, how about maybe? <laughs> how about this? So how about I do a request song of one of my songs that I actually know? Is that a better idea? Yeah, <laughs> just one though. Just one. Well, the album is amazing. So Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Well, on that note, we're going to leave it there. Chris, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, man. Thank you.